Recall that in a previous module, we looked at rate of heat transfer through a rectangular wall and we also use the thermal resistance concept. Uh, you should uh, review that uh, before we look at heat conduction in a multi-layered system. Imagine that we have a wall that has got multi-layers, uh, layers of different materials. Uh, for example, a wall could be covered with insulation and so on. So let's take an example of a wall made up of three layers. So we have uh, layer B, layer C, layer D, and uh, the temperature on one side is T0, on the other side, let's say, is T3, and the uh, interface temperatures are T1 and T2. Uh, and the uh, coordinate system uh, is uh, X uh, from 0, and uh, at this side of the wall, we can call that X0, and then X1, and X2, and X3. Uh, now, Q, the rate of heat transfer, uh, Q is moving through the wall. Remember that uh, that Q must remain the same. We are talking of steady state conditions. Uh, there is no, uh, we are not generating energy or we are not destroying energy. So that whatever Q enters the wall on this side must come out on the other side. And also the thermal connectivity values for each layer are different. So we have KB, KC, and KD. So we will use the uh, thermal resistance concept to determine the uh, rate of heat transfer through this wall. And uh, so we will draw the thermal resistance circuit. So here we have the temperature T0. We identify that here on this point. And then we have the thermal resistance for first layer. And then we have temperature T1. And then the next resistance value. And then temperature T2 and then another resistance value, and then we have temperature C3. Uh, and the thermal resistance values are R, and let's just call it R for B, and RC and RD. Those are the thermal resistances for layers B, C, and D. The individual wall thicknesses are LB, LC, and LD. Recall that the thermal resistance for a single layer is R equals L over Ka. That is what we obtained in the other module. So uh, we will go ahead then and uh, write the thermal resistance values for each of these layers. So we will have R, B, will equal L B over K B A R C will be L C over K C A and R D will be L D over K D A. And also recall from our previous module that the Q value uh, through a wall is Q equals the temperature difference, that's how we had it before, divided by the thermal resistance. So we can go ahead now and add all these thermal resistance values to get our total resistance. So the total resistance is LB over KBA plus LC over KCA plus LD over KDA. A. And we can go ahead and substitute that in our equation here. The equation then uh, for rate of heat transfer is the temperature difference uh, for the entire circuit. And note that temperature difference is T0 minus T3. And that's in the numerator. And in the denominator, we should have the sum of all the resistance values, all the thermal resistances. So we have LB over KBA plus LC over KCA plus LD over KDA. So this is our equation to find out the rate of heat transfer in a multi-layer system. Uh, note that uh, one of the uh, advantages of working with this thermal circuit is that in this equation, the numerator basically tells us 
what are the boundaries for our system. So note that T0 is the temperature on left hand side, T3 is on the right hand side. And in the denominator, we must then account for all the resistance terms that are present between those two boundaries. Now let's say that you were looking at only the first two layers. Then Q will be, so for the first two layers, the boundary values will be T0 minus T2, because those will be the two temperatures. But now we will use only the first two resistance terms. So it will be LB over KBA plus LC over KCA. So uh, this makes uh, this approach very useful to handle any number of layers. If you had four layers, then again, uh, you will need to write the appropriate boundary temperatures from one side to another and make sure then that we write all the four terms uh, for that four-layered system.